everyone thank you for tuning in i am jay lee this is jay's corner this is my review for 90 day fiance season two episode nine and i'm like when is the end when is next episode the end and then i was watching my dvr and i'm like why does this say three hours what the fuck is going on I can't watch this shit for three hours. I was very confused. But it was some little after show thing. Them live thing. Where I didn't watch it all. I was like I don't care. Anyway if you have not done so already. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to become a whole Jaybird. Hey Jaybirds. Um, it's 4am. Excuse me. And I want to get through this. <laughs> without being delusional. Anyway, um, again, if you have not done so, become if you have not done so already, please subscribe to become a J Bird. And you know, come look around, uh, watch around, comments around, share around, uh, all the good stuff. And then do not forget to also, um, hit the notification bell because it lets you know when I have new content available. So. I thought it was going to be longer, but it wasn't, thank God. But then I was like, oh, the season is ending on episode 9. But maybe it's going to be episode 10 we saw stuff. But I'm like, you know, it was everything that happened. Um, first things, y'all know I do person by person. Um, Marta and I think it's Deja, <clears throat> the girl who's trying to go to Algeria. I don't care. I watch what she said, but she didn't say anything. She's having second guesses and second doubts about going because he has not gotten her the letter to visit that she needs. I don't care. I honestly don't even know why she's on the show. Next. Paul and Karini. So, you know, Paul is upset because even though Karini is pregnant, she still wants a divorce. And he's like, I want to make it work. I want to be with you, girl. Okay, I'm saying? I want to be happy little family. I want to love you. Let me love you. Love you. And, you know, she like, you know, I'm just concerned that the fighting won't stop. And I want the baby to grow up in a household that does not have a whole bunch of fuss and fighting or whatever. The baby does not need fighting parents. And the reason I feel like that's a bunch of bullshit and fuck shit or whatever is mainly because you marry him knowing he was like that. Like, you marry him saying he's always, we're always arguing. So, I feel like I've said to people before, you can't know who someone is before you marry them and then assume once you get married they'll change no they're gonna be the same asshole they were before y'all got married so if you marry them no you're gonna have to deal with that so i feel like she cannot want a divorce because he's the exact same man he was when she agreed to marry him like he ain't gonna change girl bye but you know she's right to not want to raise a kid in a fighting household but you married you married a man who you always fighting with what you want to do anyway you know what i'm saying either he begs a little bit more she's a, she agrees to um give him a chance and give the marriage another chance in hopes that he will change you know what i'm saying um she do say that how she i do want the baby around you i do want you to be able to be around the baby give it love and you know affection you know what i'm saying be an active parent so i'm like well that's a great thing that she's willing to do that and they kiss and make up and they get in the hammock and they swing back and forth and they're happy okay um we then see no, he then says how, you know, he knows his job is to be a responsible man and a, and a good husband and a good father and, you know, to take care of them. Oh, my Lord, Jesus, this is going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. And then she goes to a doctor's appointment. So she went to a doctor's appointment to, get a, to have a regular routine ultrasound. And the ultrasound showed the baby had some kind of, you know, abnormality or some kind of de uh, deformity. Um, with it. So they told her, you know, to get a regular doctor's appointment to see what's kind of going on. So she gets to the regular doctor's and when they find out she's like nine weeks pregnant. And then they're, you know, putting up the heartbeat and stuff like that. But there's no heartbeat. 
there is no heartbeat. The, and these, the doctor, like, you know, there's no heartbeat. There's no activity. She lost the baby. Now, her, Karini, the mom are crying. Paul, of course, who does not speak the language, has no idea what's going on. He just knows there's something wrong, but he does not understand that they're telling her the baby died, that she had a miscarriage. He thinks that it's telling her something could possibly be wrong with the baby, but he does not realize, you know. So he's like, I don't speak the language. What's going on? Like, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. But the doctor, like, okay, you can get up and get out now. I'm looking like, well, God damn it. But at that point in time, it's nothing for them to. So he told her what he needs to tell. So she had to go back and sit up in the front. So because Paul does not speak the language, the, one of the producers steps in and, like, translate. Because he's like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, what's going on? So they go and sit down with the other doctor lady who tells, who explains to the producer, who then explains it to Paul, like, you know, um, the, she had a miscarriage. And then Paul said, wait, the baby's dead? And he was like, the baby's dead? And they were like, yeah. He was like, fuck. So at this point, he realized that's why they were have that's what they were talking about. Um, so he's like, well, what happened? Like, this, did we do something? Like, what happened? So they were saying earlier how it was nothing that she did or he did or anything. The baby, whatever the deformity was within the baby that they saw on the ultrasound is what, you know, made her have a miscarriage. And they said that she actually miscarried last week. Because they was asking her in the beginning if she had fell, if she was having any cramps, any bleeding, if she ate anything weird or whatever. And she was like, no, I had, she said, I had a lot of cramping in my stomach before, but, you know, that was about it. So she, because she was having a miscarriage and she didn't realize it or whatever. Um, and they're like, well, yeah, the baby stopped going a week ago. And it was just so sad because she now has to be in the hospital for two days. They had the baby removed. And, you know, it was just sad. Like, I can't crack not nan joke. Um, people kept saying, like, oh, she wasn't five weeks pregnant. She's five months pregnant, and she's not. She was nine weeks, and she lost it in nine weeks, which means she probably was five weeks. You found out, and this was, you know, I'm just like, <sighs> it's just sad. You know, you don't wish um, that on anyone, and I think it's even worse because, and I feel like that's the reason they should kind of realize they need to learn to speak each other's language because it can be nothing worse than being in the hospital. And if you don't have anyone to translate for you, you have no idea what's going on. He had no idea he was being told his baby died. He had no clue. Like, my thing is, why not have you, you should have had your goddamn Google Translator up. I said I wasn't going to joke. God damn it. Anyway, it was a sad thing. And that was the whole thing of, you know, but I like how he was being there for her. And he was crying and sad about it. And I'm like, it's just, it was so sad. Um, Ricky Her and, and Hermena. Ricky Hermena still on that little excursion, honey, not honeymoon, excursion, vacation, um, thing or whatever. And he is still trying to get her to forgive him about choosing her second to Melissa. Okay. She's still a little bit pissed off about that because she's like, you know what I'm saying, bitch, I'm the one second choice. So, you know, he tells her, because they sit out on like a little, like a little, they sit at the dock of the bay, <laughs> honestly. A little dock went about the water, and then he tells her how when he gets back to the States, he wants to, um, well, no, he's, yeah, when he's home, I want to have you video chat with my daughter. Um, you know, and she's like, oh, okay, well, have you ever had Melissa do that? And he was like, no, you know, never, whatever. Um, and she then brings up how she's still upset. She's still mad at him for what he did. And so he like, what can I do to make you, you know, love me or make it up to you? What can I do to make amends for that? She then says, okay, you can jump in the water. And he's like, what? And she's like, jump in the water and scream, Hermena, I'm sorry, I love you. If you do that, I'll forgive you. And he's like, but I can't swim. She's like, I don't care. You know, this is, this is I'm like, she's crazy. This is a sacrifice that you will make. Me. I'm like, she want him to die. He then says, if I die, it's on you. She's like, I can live with that. I'm like, she's crazy. She's nuts, okay? Um, and then he says, you know, okay. Now he's like, I can't swim, but I'm going. And I'm like, but do you know how deep the water is? Like, I'm, I won't jump in a pool that's more than eight feet if I'm not gonna be by the edge because I need to come back up and grab it because I can, like, I can swim. But sometimes I'll panic when I can't 
if I'm in the middle. Like, I'm like, where the fuck am I at? Like, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? And now I have to be like, okay, girl, just try some water. Because I, I know I was going to, but you know what I'm saying? That's the pool. You in a whole body of water. Like, you don't know how deep that water is. How do you know you don't jump in and the whole Loch Ness Monster don't grab your leg and suck your ass down to the bottom? You jumped in some murky, dirty water, too. bro. I would not have done it. But he jumps in. Damn, it dies, okay? But he treads a little bit of water, but luckily he jumped in. And where he jumped in is when he came back up. He kind of, you know, flared around a little bit and grabbed the and grabbed the little dock or whatever. And he like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because he can't swim. He can't swim. And not only that, the dock where he is is not like they have. Like, you know, in the pool, you jump in. It's a place for you to climb back up on in the, out the pool. Ain't no place for them to climb back up. And he couldn't get back up. He could not get back up on the dock of the bay. The producers had to help Pull his ass out that water because he's not a swimmer. And she laughed like, "Oh my god, it's so funny!" But now she forgives him. It was cute though. It was cute. It was funny. I mean, she said, "I'm a little crazy, whatever." And you are because you asked that man to jump in the water. He could have died. But he was dumb. I don't want to die with you, bitch. I want to live. Okay, that's what I would have said. Anyway, you know, she forgives him, whatever, and, you know, he says how she's so loving, how she challenges him, how she cares about him, she cares about his kids, and so for him, he feels like she's a great person to be a mother to a child, so he wants to propose, and she's happy and kissing and hugging, whatever, so she's over it, so I'm like, okay, if he like it, I love it, if she like it, we love it, too. So, we do see him, like, take her to, like, a dinner or whatever, they're in this little barge or this little dock in the middle of the water now. Um, where they're gonna have dinner, and then he has the ring or whatever, and you know he like I want I want to take a picture, so turn around so I can get I can get this little, this cute little picture. So she turns around away from him, and then he gets down on one knee. So okay, I turn around, and he's down on one knee to propose. And of course, you know he's like I just want to be with you. I love you so much, whatever. And love, love, love. Will you marry me? And you know she says yes. And now in the middle of that lake, in a Target T-shirt some blue jeans and a fanny pack he proposed and she said yes okay he love it you know he then said that's the reason i had to tell you about melissa was because i wanted to be 100 percent honest with you and i had to do that because i want to spend the rest of my life with you i'm like oh so she said yes she's happy you know what i'm saying she said this is the best day of her life and now she engaged to a man who about to leave and who lives in the states so it was what it was and then we seen him say to her in english you know i'm your fiance and we're engaged or whatever and then she repeated it in english so i'm like well yeah teach her english so she can know english do that um that was anything um rachel and john rachel and it was weird rachel and john you know she's going back to see him in london or whatever she's very very happy to see him and so she's back there for them to get married she's back for about a week to get married to him and we know that none of her friends or family can make the wedding so it's just her and his people or whatever so she said she also found out something about him while she was in the states and she does not want well she wants to bring it up but now when she first sees him she does not want to ruin their first moment of being back around each other so of course he's happy to see her she's happy to see him happy 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 he can't wait to marry her she's like eh he has more gray hair than I think he had before. I wonder before he dyed his hair. Because I'm like, he got a whole, I mean, he has enough gray hair to, which it seems as if he's aged five years. So I'm like, I wonder before he just dyed it. Or maybe before he had a hat on. I can't, I just not remember him having as much gray as he has now. But he still looks cute. Little short, little distinguished man. So they're having a, like a pre-wedding pre-wedding party and because no one she knows will be there he says it's about 20 people coming you know between family and friends and whatnot he says but well, i did not want it to be you know this men 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 even though he said last 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 i said what the fuck is i'm like oh last this mean guys um he says so i invited some women and she was like oh hmm, really like who? Like you know, what do you want? He said, You know what? I, I actually invited one of my ex girlfriends and she was like, Say what now? And you know, he said, I hadn't seen her in years. I kinda of bumped into her. We were chit chatting and talking. I told her I was getting married and so I invited her. And initially it sounded innocent enough. Um, because at times you do see people of your past 
Oh, I'm getting married. Oh, are you? Wow. That's the great. And depending on how much of a friend you guys were, sometimes you may you may invite them to the wedding party or whatever. Um, I had an ex of mine invite me to his wedding. I didn't go. And they got divorced less than a year later. But they had nothing to do with me at all. Um, I just was like, you should should not invite your ex to a wedding. Um, but I, because I, I get it, it, it was the exact same thing. We were great friends back in the day, you know, nothing, nothing went wrong or whatever. And we, like, I, the day he was getting married, some kind of way I saw a post about it. And I said, congratulations. And he sent me a DM and said, oh, the wedding is here. Like, you should come. I want to see you. And I was looking like, um, no. You know, it was weird. Um, the way he did it. But Brian, I mean, Brian. <laughs> but John may have done it differently. Funny, funny, funny. Anyway, she like, you know, I don't want to have his exes there. Like, that's just weird for me. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want to do that. And, you know, but I'm like, men are idiots. Men are full-fledged idiots. Even though I don't feel like he, did, she feels like he did it because he used to have, he's a cheater. And maybe he's putting women around him to cheat on me again. But again, men are stupid. They're very stupid. So sometimes we have to give them the credit that they're stupid and they do stupid shit. And call them on it, but don't always make them seem like they were purposely trying to fool you. Sometimes they're just fools themselves, okay? Um, anyway, but I'm like, you know, men are idiots, especially men you don't know. You don't know this man. And so he's even more of an idiot because you don't know what he's capable of. Anyway, you know, at one point he was trying to, like, drive and she was supposed to do the navigation. And she did not say, I guess, loud enough or clear enough. My battery is always low. But this is my last one, even though it's four seventeen in the morning. She did not say loud enough or clear enough to go left. Well, you know, I can't hear you. And he got a little smart. Said a cuss word or two, which made her feel some kind of way. And at that point in time, like, you know what? I just feel like, you know, I need answers about stuff. And you know what I'm saying? I just feel disrespected. But I think that's more about whatever else she read or heard or figured out about him in the States. So, we they not stayed at his mama house. She they didn't rent like a little cottage near the wedding or whatever they put the baby to sleep and then she brings up what she found out she says how he gave her permission or he gave her his password to his social media so that she could do some things for him and so he gave her the passwords to do those things she then say you know he gave it to me to fix some stuff and the way my computer set up it lets it it will log it will allow me to log back into his account which means you saved his password so that you could log back into his account when you weren't supposed to be in it. You know, it was what it was. So I'm like, don't make it seem as if you have a special phone or a special computer that out the blue. Oh, guess what it does? It's No, all computers do that when you save the password. Okay. Anyway, she then says, out the blue, I saw a message pop up and some said click on it. And I read it, and it was a message between him and one of his exes. So I read it, and I was heartbroken. And I said, "You out? So you just happened to accidentally sign into his account, and at that time you you was on there at the same time a message popped up. A whole I'm like, she just didn't lie right. She didn't lie right. Like you ha you have to learn how to lie better. You're not a good liar. Anyway." So, you know, he says, she's telling him, like, this is what happened or whatever. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, it's kind of crazy. Uh, and we found that it's a different ex than the ex who we invited to their wedding party. So, you know, he like, oh, so the one time you were in my, you know, social media, the one time you, you, you some kind of way got in there, you saw this. It was when the message came up. And she was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're a bad liar. You can learn a lot better. Anyway, she brings up how, you know, you told her that you that you did love her and how you felt bad for how you treated her back then. And when she said that, was he an idiot for doing that? Yes. But when she said it and the way she said it, I got what he did. And call me, oh, you're so gullible. Please me, I'm not. Trust and believe I'm not. What I get from it was, John ain't never been faithful. 
So John ain't never cared, ain't never cared about people like to the to the extent that he cares about Rachel. I do feel like because he now loves someone, he now feels like, well, damn, this is how they love me, and I broke their fucking hearts. Oh my god, that was horrible. Okay, and. I feel like him saying, you know, yes, I did love you. And I feel bad for what I did. And because what he then said was, if you would have kept reading it or kept looking at it or whatever, I was talking about me marrying you and how I had changed from who I was back then. I felt like when he said that he connected to an ex in some way shape or form and he felt bad for how he treated her because he now know what it feels like to love somebody and i feel like he probably felt the need to like say sorry or whatever um not saying that he could have had other motives but i from what she said and from what he said i got both points she had every right to be pissed off okay i'm not saying she didn't have a right to be pissed off but i also feel like what he did based on how he explained it and what she said she read in the beginning he didn't have any ill intent or any malicious intent like i don't think he was trying to fuck her or get back in with her he was saying like look i i'm sorry for what how i was back then like but now i'm so different like and i'm sorry because i did love you back then but i was an asshole back then like i was fucked up back then like i couldn't do nothing right back then but you know what i'm saying I'm a changed man now and I'm getting married to somebody so I'm sorry for what I did to you back then because sometimes an ex can that can help an ex heal you know what I'm saying so I got both sides of it one you have to rem remember that when you snoop you find shit so you snoop you find some shit and it hurt your feelings uh, on the same thing um, he can't be out here in boxing exes bro don't do that that's just stupid anyway um, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm upset because you use the word love. And I feel like, again, she, she has a valid reason to feel that way. However, he did used to love people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The same way you probably did too. So you can't get mad that he used to love somebody because you were not his first. There's last, but you're not his first. So, you know, again, she has every right to be upset. But I'm like, girl, you can't, when you snoop, you find shit and it always hurts you. Anyway, um, she does say how he said, you know, I couldn't. He said well, I couldn't ignore the fact that I loved her. Like I could not uh, ignore or avoid the fact that in the past I did love her. He says because I broke someone's hearts because I wanted to be a whore is what he basically said. Um, but she said, you know, I just feel like certain things should not be said. Like I just don't think you should be out here saying stuff to your exes or whatever. It's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Especially not before you get married. And that's true too. So again, they both you know have points they both had valid points um he says like for him i was thinking about the future you know which made me think about my past and you know he says i was trying to um he said i was trying to say that i know how a man to love a woman now even though I did not know it then, I know it now and I feel bad for how I treated her back then and I'm like again I got what he meant Okay, I got it. I was like, whatever. But I feel like, girl, move on. Like, move on. Like, because you're not going to not marry him. And at least he tried to be honest with you about it. So, I'm like, if you're not going to not marry him, you need to move on from this. And, and trust that what he says is true. And if he's a liar, you'll find out. But, girl, stop with you. Girl, move on. Anyway, um... So, yeah, she has a reason to question him because she's stupid to talk to shit. But I feel like his his responses were, you know, they seem legit. But, you know, men are sneaky, too, so we never know. Um, Hazel and Tariq, I don't I don't get them. You know, he all happy because she just said she loves him. I think it's a fake and fugazi bullshit, but whatever. Um, So, he's trying to FaceTime her. No, he's trying to FaceTime his, he, his daughter's mom. And she, at first, and I'm like, that's weird. Because he's like, I want you to see my daughter or something like that. And then, but when she's sitting next to him, he tells her to get out the shot. So that when she answers, she won't see him. And she's like, well, that's weird. I thought the whole point of you doing it was for me to see whatever. Like, why would you tell me to move? So, but no one, no one answered the phone. 
so for her she's like i'm nervous but also excited to meet or to see daughter or whatever um because again that's what I, I want to be a part of the family or whatnot um but when no one answered she asked him like you know what i'm saying kind of what's going on with that or whatnot and then she said you know what well um my baby mama don't know about you yet like i ain't told her whatever and she like really and he's like, he, well, yeah, because he's like, basically because of how she's acted in the past, I just have not told her about you. Like, as a matter of fact, um, you know, we went through a whole custody battle or whatever. It was a lot that we went through. And so, when I'm usually having something good in my life, she throw monkey wrenches and fuck shit up. So, I just choose to keep her away from certain situations. She said, as a matter of fact, she don't even know where I'm at currently. All she knows is I'm not in, in, in Virginia Beach. So, she don't know this fool in a whole different country trying to marry a whole different girl i'm like lord jesus she's gonna watch this season and be pissed the fuck off um she brings up i mean he says how he keeps his life personal thoroughly just, he keeps his private life damn it he keeps his personal personal life private so she won't know i said so what that means is you got a whole baby mom situation like you got a whole crazy deranged person when you have to say I don't let her know nothing I'm doing to the fact that I'm in a different country. And she don't know that. I feel like that's crazy because you know how crazy she is. But whatever. Um, he said that stuff for me. I would rather just not have her involved to avoid the bullshit. And then, you know, she feel like, well, I think you need, need to tell her about me so that she can see, you know, I want to be a good mother figure to her, you know, be a good person in your heart. I said, no, you don't know. Nope, that's not gonna help. It's gonna make it worse. Um, it's, it's Especially if he say she always fucks shit up, which means she'll wait till I'm happy and throw a whole monkey wrench in it. And then you're like, she don't care how good the person is to me. She just wants me to be unhappy. And some people are like that, men and women. Um, she says she feels as if he might not be ready for marriage because I want to go to the U.S., bring my son, have him, also be married to Tariq and be a mother figure to his daughter. But how can I do that if he don't even want to tell his baby mama, his, his baby mama about me? And I said, well, that's true, but you don't know that, man. So, girl, calm down. Um, so, she's like, I thought like maybe we won't be a happy family because she won't allow us to be that way or because he won't tell her about me. I said, if you like it, I love it. Um, they then, like, on the beach talking and, like, having dinner or something. And he brings up how, you know, I got a whole crazy brother who be doing this, this, and this. She then says, well, I have a crazy sister. And he's like, what, really? And she's like, yes, yeah, she lives in Japan, um, you know, and she doesn't like you. And she wants me to marry a Japanese man. And he is so, like, a, a what? I can't believe that. Like, wow, your brother is the exact same way. She just described her sister. It's just like your brother. So when he was acting so confused, like, I can't believe someone who does not know me would not like me. Your brother don't know her and he don't like her. Your brother thought that she was always scamming her. Said, it's the same thing except it's her sister and not your brother. But why are you confused? Bruh, the fuck by. Anyway, so she brings up how her sister is saying the same thing. Like he may not really want to be with her or whatever. And how she should um, be with somebody else. And you know, they're closer to them. And how the sister wants her to marry this Japanese man who was possibly rich because her sister is married to a Japanese man who has money. And I'm like, why she don't send you no money? Anyway, um, at this point in time, I just, I can't believe this. He acting weird. He acting weird like the, like the, like the shape of his head. Okay, that's how weird he's acting. Anyway, um, he like, look, I'm here to spend time with you. I'm here to get to know you. You, you, you. I'm not here for nothing else. So, you know, let's forget about your sister craziness and also my brother. And, you know, he says he feels like, I feel like she's backing me in a corner because she's saying that her sister wants her to marry the Japanese guy. And if I don't propose, she might marry the Japanese guy. And I just think that's kind of crazy. And I, I don't like being, I don't like feeling that I'm being backed into a corner. You came there to propose to her. You brought a ring. You're not being backed in the corner. You can't prepare for this shit, okay? Be prepared, bruh. It's what's going on. And then they're like walking on the beach or whatever. 
And he's asking her, like, I keep biting my tongue. He's asking her, like, do you really love me? Like, do you really love me? And do you really want to be with me and not be with this man, this Japanese man? And she says, yes, I really love you. Yes, it's just. And then he's like, you know what? Let's play some beach music. I'm like, okay, what are they going to play some beach music? What are they going to play? He starts playing some rap song. His old ass done rap. I'm looking like, this is the worst idea ever. Okay? Just bad. I'm like, it sounds horrible. It was just, it was, you did not know what he was saying. He should not be a rapper. So you're too old to try to be a rapper. Like, just let it go. And the song is about her or him coming there to be with her or whatever. And how at the end of the day, she going to come back with him. And that's how the song ends. But I don't think she even understood what it was saying. I speak English and I don't get what it was saying. So I was completely fucking confused. And then, you know, he then gets down on one knee, balding and all. Top of his head about to be bald and everything. And he proposes. And the weird thing is, she's like... Are you for real? Like, are you, are you serious? Like, she was, and not like happy shocked, but not sad shocked, but like, what the fuck? Am I getting punked? Is he proposing? Really? Already? It's how she acted. And then he he was dying there for a minute, man, waiting for her to say, yeah, ring in hand, everything. And then, you know, are you serious? Are you sure? He says, yes, 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 yes. And she's like, okay, yes. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. You know, and now they trying to kiss and hug and stuff, but not too good because he don't kiss well. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's just weird they engaged now, and he's so happy. He like, you know, what I'm saying, it took her a moment to respond. Like, why did it take your mom to respond? And she said, I just did not expect him to propose on this trip. I think he assumed. I think she assumed he would. I don't know what she assumed, but I'm like. If you want him to be with you and you want him to marry you, but you know he was leaving, I would assume she would think he was going to propose. But again, she said I would have shocked. I think it was more of a thing of, I don't want to, do I really want to marry this weird man who keeps trying to kiss on me and the top of his head is balding, but it's weird because it's shiny, but his hair there too. Like, I think those are the thoughts that went through her head. And so, you know, uh, he says that she is the love of his life. Next, Michael and Angela. I don't need. I, you know, it's like how can I even? Because I almost don't care. Because you know he's still trying to get her to believe in him. So he's taking her on his little hike in these rocks that they had warriors who hid back in the day when they were at war or whatever. So they're having fun, you know, touring and sightseeing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? He then asks her, like, hey, baby, baby, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up about me and you? Like, what are you going to do? And then she's like, you know what, Michael? You know, I just, you know, I just, we have to be compatible. Like, and I just don't know right now. I just, I don't know. And then he like, you know, I love you. I love you. I just want to be with you. And only you, baby, 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 I love you, baby. And he's like, you know what? I love you too, Michael, but I just don't know yet. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. You know, we then see them have like a whole little sit down business deal conversation. And I feel like him you know saying, she's buying a penis, he's buying a trip to America. It's an even trade. You know, and as they sit there, I'm like, neither one of them looks their age. He looks, he looks 50. She looks 70. It's the weirdest thing. And he's on, we know, you age definitely in Nigeria. Anyway, she's like, you know, what do you know I mean? I know you don't don't like liars and you don't like cheaters. God know that for a fact. And then, you know, she's like, you know, in the States, I'm boring. Like, I don't go out. I go to work and that's it. I'm very, very boring. Can you live a boring life with me, Michael? Can you do that? Because, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to make the, make the wrong mistake. You know what I'm saying? Um, he said, I think we will argue a little bit over there whatever. But she makes me feel like a real man. How? How? When? When she cussing you out, when she's yelling, or when she's smoking a cigarette, even though you hate cigarette smoke. I'm like, bruh, the fuck by. You know, she brings up how, I mean, he says, you know, I, 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 um, 
he she said he says i know what i'm getting myself into. i know what i'm getting myself into and i'm ready i'm ready baby i am ready i'm ready to be there for you in america that's what he prays for you know she, i'm scared michael i'm just so scared you know what I'm saying? i just you know if i if i say no i lose a good man okay if i say yes it's a possibility you may hurt me. I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm like, oh, girl, who cares? You know what I'm saying? And I can't afford to make any more mistakes. Trust in me, baby. Okay? Trust in me. Okay? And then she's like, I can see in your eyes that you love me. I'm like, oh, girl, no, that's not. That's just the dust. It's dusty in there. Okay? She then gives him an American flag. And it's like with, a, with the ring she got from the pawn shop for him. This fool, she like, yeah, this is your coming to America. That's the ring we're engaged. He, oh my God, baby, baby. Oh, I'm just so. Oh. I hate when my thing goes off. Anyway, baby, baby, I'm so happy. I am so, so happy. Happy, happy. He's d d danced around, hugging her. Shaking her up or whatever, all these things, and I'm like, bro, calm down, bro. You can't go. I don't, I don't think that you can go tomorrow. Like, I think it's a whole process to think or whatever. And so, you know, at this point in time, he's hugging her, hugging her, hugging her, whatever. He then pulls out a ring for her and proposes to her. I said, these motherfuckers, these fools is engaged. And I'm the whole time I'm wondering. Is that bitch wearing riding boots in Nigeria? Like, I thought it was hot. Who wears leather riding boots in Nigeria? I'm like, it may be because it was bugs or whatever. But I'm like, girl, your thighs ain't hot. Anyway, I'm done. They engaged. Darcy and Jesse. <sighs> Jesse back in town. But he's only back there to break up with her for good. Is what he's saying. And, you know, he's talking about how... I gotta hear this up because I got like 5% left on my phone. Um, he brings up how he had been thinking about what to do with, do with the situation and it wasn't until he heard of something that happened that kind of put a whole little nail in the coffin for him to realize him saying we cannot be together and I'm making the right decision. Um, he says for me that, that what I heard confirms my worst fears in her. Um, and he says, I picked the park because it's like a public place or so whatnot. And it's easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Now, meanwhile, Darcy is in the park. She's in the park in a fur coat fur coat dress boobs all out stiletto heels or whatever with all her luggage part she's in with a big old luggage purse i'm like it's just so much stuff she has in this park it's just kind of crazy and she thinks he's oh he was going to the park because he wants to see it's, it's in the name of love and you know what i'm saying it's it's nice that he spent money to come here i'm like girl it's gonna be a whole rude awakening um and she said i don't know where we stand okay i don't know where we stand because he's in amsterdam i'm here but we just have we have so much love and you maybe it's it's willing to save it i'm like no bitch no no it's not right here no it's not right here okay and then when she gets to the park she's like you know what something doesn't feel right i feel like she got there and she assumed i would get here and it would be like fireworks and boom 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 and she got in one number like pigeons and bird shit and so you know she again she's in the park with this luggage suitcase purses fur coat heels boobs out and it's like an all white i'm like girl you you're not feeling ain't you not feeling godly he walk up and they hug oh my god hi and you can tell he like she all dressed up she has all this luggage again he didn't tell her nothing and so i think he realized okay she think it's something else but he also did that knowing she would think it was something else he did this shit on purpose so when they hug he like oh that's a pretty dress it's a pretty dress because then she was overdressed and it's like i work for you you know what i'm saying and i brought you know bags or whatever because i know what the plan was that i saw this brought some you know i brought all kind of stuff to you know what i'm saying because i don't know what we're gonna do and then he said, like, oh, okay, let's get an Uber. <laughs> let's get an Uber and get you back to your hotel. Okay, let's do that because um, you're cold. Because you look cold. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm freezing. Because <laughs> she didn't wear no clothes. Um, and so they get an Uber to go back. And in the car, I feel like she, I feel like she started with him. You know, 
some I'm not here for you. I don't want any drama. I want anything. And I'm like, what? Well, he don't. It don't look like he said much. But because of that little thing, he then like, okay, I cannot be mature with her. It cannot be a whole mature conversation. I'm just gonna do it here in the car. I'm not gonna wait to get to anywhere else. And then you're like, I can't take your lies, your deceits, your antics. And she's like, what? I don't lie. I don't just see. We. I don't, whatever. And he says, how long will you have to go to jail? What? I don't know. What? Whatever. I don't care. So it was a whole other thing. Whatever. Again, he found out that her and his sister got into a fight. And for some reason, she was arrested. And that's why he was upset. And at this point in time, you know, she does admit, yes, we got into a fight. Okay. But we fight. We make up. It's fine. You know what I'm saying? We're fine. And I don't need to explain anything to him because we're not engaged. But I feel like if you want to be with him, y'all should talk. So let's think of you don't, but she, as she said before, she don't know where their relationship is, but she just knows I don't need to tell him about my arrest or, or whatever. But I'm not he found anyway. Um, at this point in time, he wanted to get the car because they're arguing and yelling back and forth. I don't care what they're saying. He wanted to get the car. I'm, I want to get out because I know I don't want to be in here with her. I want to get out. No, I want to get out. I want to get out, sir. Sir, I, I'm like, why are y'all arguing over who gets out? One of you motherfuckers get out the car. Anyway, so <laughs> he tell her, you know, go get therapy for your drinking. Okay, keep drinking and keep getting arrested. I'm like, oh, why she do that? At this point in time, now she's jumping out the cab. You know what? Take my bags to the hotel. I cannot be. I cannot do this. And then she sells the car. But then she go gets her own bag. You know what? You're a liar. Get out of my life. You never loved me. I'm like, Lord Jesus. And now she out there in the hills, hailing the cab with all that luggage and the white fur coat. And it goes off. These heifers, these hoes, these people, these people is crazy. I, I really hope next week is the finale. I can't. Because, I mean, I feel like most of them are engaged. They, Dar- Darcy and, um... Jesse gonna break up. Paul and Karina gonna stay together and mourn the baby loss. And Angela and Michael, uh, he gonna get held up at custom for weed. Um, who else do we have? Monta, she ain't going over there. Um, who else? John and Rachel, we not gonna be married. So it is what it is. I just see that in, in my mind. Hazel say on the next episode, I Tyreek don't know, but when he go back to, when he leaves, she gonna be homeless. So she need a home. Hold up, baby. Um, cause she just don't know how to how to do it right. Ricky Hermana, we hear that he lied about something. Else. It's you know, it's. I just need the next episode to be the finale. I don't. It, we don't need four five more episodes. We do not need that. Okay, at all. Anyway, I'm done. Cause it's four forty two in the morning. <sighs> it's like love, 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 and you.